Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the R Smash Brothers AMA brought to you by the Daily. I, of course, am your host, uh, Ian John Barker. And if you'll notice, this isn't Jared. This is not Jared. This is arguably a massive upgrade to Jared. With me, uh, for if you've, any of you watched the Best of Three Fighting Show on Tuesdays, this is Mike Donka Schiller. Mike, how are you tonight? You know, Kiwi Kid just tried to teach me Hearthstone, and I haven't made it to Worlds either. <laughs> <laughs> so you do have something in common. I like it. I like it. That'll, you know, give you a conversation piece when, uh, when you get to see him next time. I think he lives here. I think, yeah, does he? No. We'll find him. Anyway, <laughs> Mike will be joining me tonight to answer your questions in the Daily.AMA. This week's guest, of course, if you haven't heard already, what are you living under a rock? This week's guest is Weston Westfall's Dennis. The individual comes to us from California. But first, we've got a little background about our friend Wes. The line for Godhood and Super Smash Brothers Melee is long and winding, but sitting near the front of the queue is one Falco player from California. A Falco player in a game that's largely written the character off for the faster Fox, Weston Westball's Dennis brandishes his remarkable technical skill and indomitable drive en route to regular top-level finishes. Aside from a stumble at EVO in July, Dennis has yet to finish outside of the top six in over one dozen major tournaments in 2015. Multi-shiner, hard nosed aggressor technical master if you play falco then west balls is the man to beat wes how you doing tonight yo guys what's up man <laughs> you got I'm any good. how are you you got any shout outs before we kick the show off um shout out to my sponsor tempo for uh letting me uh live the dream because uh they helped me get to events and uh it's a lot easier, like on me, to be sponsored and stuff. So it's easier to get to events. So shout out to them. Nice, and of course, they're. Uh, I'm sure they they paid you handsomely to be on our show, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> it's a once a lifetime uh, opportunity, right? For you don't sure. Have to for sure. <laughs> they definitely do a lot. They're definitely a great. Uh, great team. Awesome, man. Well, uh, as the folks at home may know, uh, this is the R Smash Brothers AMA brought to you by The Daily Dot. The format is every Monday we announce a new guest. You go to the R Smash Brothers subreddit where the mods graciously put up a thread for us every week. You answer the questions, vote on your favorite ones. We read them live on the air, including your name. You're, you're basically internet famous for about five whole seconds before, uh, before you get... Dis- as famous as you are, Ian? Almost as famous as me. Mike, almost. Uh, <laughs> uh, this week, of course, we had uh, we we sent the questions in for West Balls to answer, and we've got the best ones ready to go on the show tonight. Wes, are you ready? Yes, I'm definitely ready. <laughs> Excellent. Well, that's enough me talking. Let's get to hear your answers. The first question comes to us from the R Smash for the AMA thread. It says. It seems that you have avoided having hand injuries despite being one of the more high APM players in the community throughout the years. Do you do hand exercises or have any routines to avert hand injuries? Do you take a break when your hands start hurting or do you fight through the pain? That, of course, comes to us through Kill Lake of James. Kill Lake of James. Kill Lake of James. <laughs> All right, so... Um the funny thing is, I've been playing since uh, I was around 15, maybe 14. So I've been learning like advanced techniques since then. And um, for the longest time, I didn't have like any hand problems. But um, after I started like turning like 21 and stuff, I guess like I wasn't able to play for like eight hours without like any breaks or like stuff like that. So um, after I'd play for like a while, like my hands would just get sore. They would never like hurt. They would just get sore just from like all the button presses. So like after maybe like five years of playing without like any sort of problems, um, I tend to take breaks now. Like I usually take a break after like two hours of playing. And if I'm playing Fox, I'm like definitely taking a break after an hour because fox is definitely a lot uh it's a lot rougher on your hands but i think falco isn't as rough on your hands so i think that also plays a part now can you explain to people who haven't necessarily had these pains or are playing exactly how it feels is this a wrist thing is this in like your thumb joint what's going on when you feel these pains and what do you do as soon as you feel them all right so i think uh most people's problems uh are usually in the wrist because that's what I've heard the most. So I think 
Wait, what was the other part of the question? Just as soon as you feel pain, do you do you stop playing immediately, or what what do you do in that situation? Um, I'd probably suggest stop playing like immediately if you feel any pain. Uh, I, like I've had cramps before where I was like, oh my gosh, like I had to like drop the controller like in mid match, but um, like that was just like a cramp. So like I think if you actually have like legit pain, like 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 throbbingness. I guess, like, I'd probably, like, take breaks. So, like, ever since about, like, maybe two years ago, I take breaks every hour to two hours. So I make sure, like, I take a 15-minute break so my hands are, like, I guess, like, well-rested, I guess. So do you so, think there is any merit in slowing down a little bit before the tournament? I know people play hand warmers all the time, but is there any worry that your hands will have these problems during a tournament match? Um, I've never heard of that, but, um, I definitely think, uh, to take good care of your hands, I think it's crucial to, like, take breaks and make sure you're not constantly in and, like, your hands are in the same position. So as long as your hands are, like, being stretched out every, like, 20 to, like, 30 minutes, I think you shouldn't really have that many hand problems. And that's what I do, so I don't have any hand problems. Nice. I'm uh, I'm being told by our executive producer that that name that I read off the top was actually Killa Kev James, uh, which so. certainly For makes sure. more sense than Killake for James. <laughs> Anyway. Kill Lake for James. None of the best here. <laughs> I mean. Actually, I see it. Kill Lake for James. I yeah. actually see it now. Yeah, no, right. <laughs> None of the best here on the Art Smash Brothers. <laughs> yeah, AMA brought to you by the Daily Dot. But anyway, moving on. It's uh, it's. I think it's important. Uh, I'm glad that that was one of our first questions off the top because it is important for you guys. Uh, you know, no matter what people say about whether you're quote unquote athletes, no matter what they phrase the term, you guys are putting yourself through stress. And so it's interesting to hear that that's something that that you've taken into account count that you've taken into consideration in your career yeah i actually started taking in consideration because my hands would get sore after three or four hours and i'd get like a little worried because like if your hands are sore for like a tournament then you're probably not going to play as well so i usually always make sure that like i don't play like too much but like sometimes i tend to like fall under the trap that like melee is so fun so like i'll end up playing for four hours like the night before a tournament and then the next day my hands are like oh gosh like (laughs) i shouldn't have played for four hours straight maybe i should have taken those breaks that i normally do gotta ask the sponsors for uh for some sign of massage or spa i guess (laughs) (laughs) like a spa weekend (laughs) there you go (laughs) <laughs> Temple Storm, I know you're watching this. Uh, well, yeah, no question that you absolutely have to be on the top of your game, especially as competitive as Melee is at the top level, which actually brings us to our next question. Uh, when you're not playing Melee, next question is, what is your favorite non-Melee thing to do? Dakbus, I'm kidding, it's D-A-C-B-S, asks, <laughs> what is your favorite non-Melee thing to do? Um... I guess just hanging out and partying with my friends, like, I, I kind of separate my, like, real life with, like, Smash life, so I have, I, I call, like, my real life friends, real life friends, I call my Smash friends my Smash friends, because my Smash friends, I don't see on a daily basis or, like, on a, like, a regular basis, so with them, I'm partying with them maybe, like, once a month or, like, maybe like once every two months but like my real friends are like i guess what like i really enjoy like being around is because i've been friends with them for a really long time so i guess just hanging out with like my friends i've I've hung out with since high school or like what i really like to do i guess other things i like to do are like uh exercising i guess so i work out with my friend like twice a week or something and uh my other friends like to bike ride all the time, so I guess I like to exercise with buddies of mine. Do you do your like real life friends, uh, as you call them, ever intersect with uh, your Smash life? Do, like, do they know uh, that you're like world class at this one really cool thing? Uh, yeah, they definitely know. They actually, uh, they actually give me. Uh, uh, they joke around about it with me all the time. They're like, oh, Wes, you can't touch Wes's hands or gamer hands. You can't, you can't mess with Wes, dude. 
<laughs> and then uh, basically anytime someone like messes with my hands, I mean, everyone's like, yo, you can't touch his gamer hands. Don't touch it. They're precious. They're precious. He's really good with his hands. <laughs> so like there's like a running joke with that. And so they definitely know, but um, like my close one, my friends don't actually really care to watch the stream. So like they've only seen it maybe once or twice like a year I guess so they they don't really pay attention to it they just think it's cool and they do pay attention to my Facebook and like Twitter and stuff they're like oh wow you have like so many followers and so many people like your stuff (laughs) and so it's they just think it's funny to like watch me because they've known me since high school so they didn't really think I'd be like going down this route now did you ever play games with them casually beforehand or like how who did you get started playing Smash with um, actually, um, I had a really good friend that lived down the street from me and, um, basically he, he would come over and we play video games like Zelda and all sorts of stuff. And then we came across, uh, Super Smash Bros and we started to play it and, um, we started to really enjoy it. Like there was just a really, like, there's just a love for the game that we both had. And, um, so we started to play like against each other like what we saw online like we'd see youtube matches like back in the day of like old ken versus like isaiah or something and so we'd like we used to play with items so like once we saw matches like those we stopped playing without items we're like oh let's let's start playing like they the, the guys online and so we started doing that and then my friend found out about techniques online and then I eventually started going to his house every day after school. It would go I'd go to his house from three to like nine PM and I'd play for six hours. And that was like a daily routine we did for maybe a year or even two. And um by that time we eventually went to our first tournament and both of us we did pretty well. Like we didn't go O and two like at our like one of our first tournaments. So like we definitely knew about advanced techniques and all sorts of stuff. And we definitely played for a really long time. But then he moved away. So I had to like play by myself or play people that are like 15 minutes away. And I just started going to more tournaments and more tournaments and more tournaments and got a bunch of experience and learned how to play at like top level, I guess. You know, it's funny when uh, when I remember playing with items, especially in high school. Uh, it seemed like you were never really fighting your opponent; you were just fighting for the pokeball. Like, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. The pokeball was everything. Yeah. You were like, if your opponent got a pokeball, you just wish they got a magic card. You're yeah. just like, oh, <laughs> you better get that magic card, or I'm gonna lose. Yeah, Goldine pops out of that thing, and you're like, oh my god, all that effort <laughs> wasted. I know Ken always said he used to prefer items, and then really? there was that Evo Brawl tournament with items. I don't know; it's a, it's a messy route. It's a it, and I always I always got mad about it because like I would always get screwed over. Like when I would throw down a Pokeball, it would be like a Clefairy that didn't hit anybody, and when somebody else got it, it'd be a Charizard. And of course, that's you know that's that it. just that you covers too that. much of the stage not to get yeah. hit. Yeah, <laughs> that's like automatic edge guarding. <laughs> like, Pretty <absolutely>. much. <clears throat> Oh, moving on to our next question. The next one comes from Grandpa Seth 18. Grandpa Seth 18 asks a very serious question that's on everyone's mind. Have you ever actually shined someone so much they started crying? Um, actually, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. You can't be serious. Um, no, I'm actually like dead serious. Uh, <laughs> but I'm not sure if it was actually because of the shining. But I definitely like multi shined so much. Like, uh, back, I think, like, maybe three years ago when I was first, like, starting to get good, like, I was, like, very BM because I was just young and dumb. So I think um, I was playing against, like, one of the, this guy that, like, was maybe one of his first tournaments, and, like, I completely destroyed him, like, really <laughs> badly with the same move over and over, and they were shines, of course. And, um, and I... Th- Someone told me after that, like, he, would, like, walked away, and he was, like, really, really sad, and, oh. like, he might have was crying, and I actually felt really bad, and, like, ever since then, I, like, I wasn't as, like, I wouldn't be, like, that BM, like, beat someone, like, really badly with one move, like, I was, <laughs> it was really, like, awful of me to do, but 
I think it actually happened, and I felt really bad, so I never did it again. <laughs> <laughs> no, was he was he crying because you beat him so bad? I'm not sure if he was actually crying. He just, <laughs> someone just said he like walked off really, really sad. <laughs> but like he said, the person also said like he looked like he was about to cry. <laughs> so I felt like really bad. He was crying, and, and you made him quit Smash. You made him quit Smash. You destroyed a player's dream that day. How does that feel? I didn't mean to. I was really, <laughs> I was young and dumb. <laughs> young in, in your dumb. defense, maybe he was crying because your play was so beautiful. He was so happy like, he to was play just, with you, dude. Yeah, like, he, was he was just was... weeping because he got to play with his favorite player. Maybe that's what happened. Maybe, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll call it that. <laughs> that sounds like a better narrative to me. Um, you were getting, like, I love, like, okay, so every, every guest we have on this show attracts different questions. Like, when we had a guy like Zoo, uh, you know, we got a lot of technical questions. When we had PPMD, a lot of it was, when are you coming back? You've got a lot of, like, a lot of people are throwing shade your way. Like, I, I really enjoy the, these questions. Uh, June Juice asks, uh, you play so damn well that people think you're on Adderall. <laughs> How does that make you feel? Uh, I mean, I guess it's flattering in a, in a sense. Um, I definitely don't do Adderall. <laughs> like, I've actually had people come up to me at tournaments after, like, the, the like, jokes started to come up. Mm-hmm. Like, actually asked me, like, hey, do you have Adderall? Do you, like, do you sell any Adderall? I'm like, like dude, come on. <laughs> like, that's just a joke. Come on, dude. Like, what, dude... Like, why are you asking me this stuff? Like, I don't fly across the country to sell Adderall to people at tournaments. Like, <laughs> so I, I guess it's flattering in a sense, but um, I don't know. I guess it's just like a funny joke people like to like talk about. So I just roll with it. Does that ever like? Do you ever like take that personally though? Like, I mean, like you're working hard. Like that's on you. Do you ever, do you ever get like? Maybe a little bit frustrated that people are like, okay, clearly this isn't your hard work. Clearly this well, okay, is the work the of thing pharmaceuticals. I think about is like, it's not about like undermining whatever I had done. It's just making, some, turning something bad into a joke, I guess. So like I was accused of doing Adderall and then now people turn it into a joke. So I think it's actually a good thing that like it's not actually like, Oh, like people were taking it seriously, and like people were like, oh, West Ball is actually does that, or like the people just think it's a joke. So, um, I mean, I like I feel like it it has no effect on like the way I think of um, like it being bad. So I don't know. I just think it's just a joke. So I just roll with it. Well, all kidding aside, you said that you exercise and it's become a big trend in chess and even in Street Fighter with Daigo to, to take good care of yourself before a tournament. Do you have like a routine that Thursday before you fly out and how hard do you go on Friday night? Um, the funny thing is like uh, I haven't been exercising as much because I've been traveling so much. So like I've kind of just been lazy and just been like cooped up in like hotels and like other people's houses and stuff like that but um basically i just uh i don't really have a routine i just do like what i feel like i should do and that's usually um basically working out for an hour or an hour and a half like every two or three days and then maybe like exercising like running or like biking like maybe once or twice a week so it's just i normally do those two things and however i feel i just do it so just enough to keep the blood pumping enough to keep you uh keep you active and get away from the controller for a little bit (laughs) yeah definitely uh i'm definitely really skinny but i think that's because i like i've been exercising all my life so i think that's why I'm so skinny. People think like, oh, Wes is like really skinny. He just doesn't eat. Like, no, I definitely eat a lot, but I definitely exercise a lot. So yeah, people yeah. are making a lot of judgments, but I mean, you're on Adderall, you don't eat, man. Like, <laughs> you well, you get judged for being, uh, just who you are. So if you're like fat and people make fun of you for being fat and if you're skinny, it's just what happens. Like if you're in the public eye, people just always are going to, try to poke fun at you so see that's why i work really hard uh to be mediocre at a lot of things and then uh fly into the radar nobody makes fun of you 
So yeah, it's just, maybe if it were <laughs> but do Smash. people do people are also really nice though. Okay. People are very encouraging, and they're like, "Oh, you're my favorite Falco." So there's definitely a lot. I feel like there's a lot more nicer people. They're like, "Oh, you encouraged me to play Falco. You're so inspiring." There's definitely a, re- a lot of nice people in this match community. Well, I'm glad you brought up uh, your talent with Falco because that's actually where our next question is coming from. Uh, Lumpy Loom asks, Lumpy Loom, a regular contributor to the show. Lumpy, good to see you on the show again. You're obviously a very talented Falco, yet you never quite get the W with any majors. What do you think are some things you need to do to get major winnable play? Um, <clears throat> I've definitely been getting closer and closer and closer. But as of recently... Um, Armada has been really tough, so I think I've been having, like, I have to set a game plan for, like, each of the top players, because normally when I go through a bracket, I go based, I don't, like, prepare for each opponent, I just prepare just in general, I guess, I just play, like, I just warm up, so, um, I think once I have, like, a game plan for all the top players... I think that's when arts I'll start seeing a lot better results or a lot or I'll start getting even closer than I have been. Even though I got like second at Sandstorm this year where five gods attended. Um I still think I can still do better and take a take a W. So once I figure out all the top players and get some like a feeling for how they play, I'm definitely gonna have a game plan for a big major and Definitely going to reveal it. <sighs> How does the term God make you feel? I mean, do you, do you feel like it, it's too much? Do you feel like you're going to encroach on that? Does it, does it make you want to become one of them? Or do you think it's, it's nothing at all? Like, what does that mean to you? Because it's not become a big deal. I think it's just a name put on a player that has done really well. So I think, let's say there's six gods. There's six players that have done really, really well. Um... And that's all I think about it. So, basically, um, I just feel like... Uh, wait, I forget what the uh, initial question was. Oh, Did, it was... Uh, the Oh, his initial question? It, yeah, it, his, his okay. question. Do you drive to become one of the gods, or would you rather just ignore it and, and win the next tournament? I mean, how does... How okay, do you feel yeah, you so fit into the picture? Yeah, I basically just think it's... Uh, uh, name for like a player who's done really good so um i guess i'm still trying to like i'm still trying to win so i'm definitely trying to beat them all and whatever they call me after is whatever they call me so i'm i think i definitely will eventually get there i think it's just going to take some experience some game planning some preparation and some hard work and that's what i plan on doing I think the the funny thing about the idea of godhood though is like there's this I think I think really that the core of it there's this idea of like invincibility um you know the 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 gods have won all the evos they've won most of the you know the, they've won a lot of the big tournaments things like that and so it it seems almost like a nebulous term like if if you were to win like three or four tournaments in a row you know would you be a god and if so would it you know what happens when you lose the next one is, is it gone you know it's it almost seems like a term that's that's developed over time to describe players but will there be any more quote unquote gods that dominate as much as as they do for a long time uh will there be <clears throat> um that's hard to say, but I'm definitely trying to be one of those players. Uh, and um, basically, I definitely think there definitely anyone has the chance to become the best. Like, if you work hard enough, I think anyone can be the best of the game. So, so if you ask me, do you think someone can, can there be another person that can do it? Of course. But is someone going to put all that time and effort? Uh, I don't know. We'll see. So it just takes a lot of time and effort. Okay, so so follow me down the rabbit hole here, right? Let's assume that the six gods are like the six best players in, in Smash, right? As determined by tournament placements, right? Uh, yeah. You have yet to finish outside the top six in a tournament this year, except for, except for Evo. Uh, but even Mango had like a, what was it, like a 15th place finish or 16th place finish earlier this year. So... 
I mean, you could easily make the argument that you're one of the top six matchers in the world right now. I mean, am I wrong? Does math does math check out? Um, not necessarily, because it all depends on the players you beat. So, for me to get top whatever I got at those tournaments, I didn't beat like Hungry Box or Mewtwo King or like I've beaten Mango once, and that was the, that was just at a local. So, um, no, I actually beat him twice. I actually beat him at Sandstorm. All right, so. Um, god yeah yeah there it is yeah that's you're officially a god congratulations you heard it here first all right maybe <laughs> uh, but i feel like it's de- more determined by how many times you've beaten the other gods that's fair and that's what separates me from the the gods basically um i don't beat them as often as they beat each other and uh i'm still working hard on it so we'll see what happens in the next year or so. Well, uh, obviously, you're well known for your your technical ability and uh, especially your ability on Falco, which is a character people have not, you know, sort of abandoned. And that actually, uh, in our next question, asks a little bit about that. Uh, Treble Boost asks. We've heard other top Falco's opinions on how they think the bird holds up in today's advancing meta, with Fox being heavily optimized and Falco being somewhat neglected. What are your opinions on this, and where do you think Falco stands? Uh, we'll, we'll start with that. And then there's, it is another longer part of the question. We can ask that afterwards. All right. So, um, all right. So I think the current meta is definitely in Fox's favor because he has the speed, he has the priority, he has the kill power, he has the recovery. So he has like every strength in the entire game and um i mean i guess his recovery isn't the best but it's still pretty darn good if you know how to use it so if you really optimize all of fox's strengths i think he's definitely the best character in the game but i also think falco is a very very close second where to the point if I optimize my strengths a little bit more than, like, let's say you. I still think Falco can definitely uh, take or has what it takes to win a major. So um, I think it's easier to take a major with Fox, but I still think Falco can still do it with a little bit extra heart, like with a little extra work. So yeah, could cool. you could you run down your opinion on Falco's matchups at the top for the people out there wondering? Okay, so Falco's good matchups. Um, I'd say uh, his good matchups are the characters he can punish really hard. So um, he can punish himself really hard. So Falco Ditto's he's pretty good in. So. <laughs> It's really weird to say, but he's good against himself. He's good against Fox. He's good against Falcon. He's good against Marth, Sheik. And um, he kind of struggles with the floatier characters because he has a harder time killing them. And he has a harder time... Um, uh, yeah, basically, yeah, like probably killing them and edge guarding them. So with all the other characters I mentioned, Falco can kill them and edge guard them, which leads to more kills. But with the floatier characters, he can't kill as easily, and which leads to 200% of floaty opponents, and you're trying to like hit them with the back air on Dreamland. So like, um, his strengths are characters that fall fast. His weaknesses are characters that fall slowly. And do you feel like Fox covers these bad matchups well, and is that something you're working on? Um, Fox definitely covers it well, but um, Falco is a weird character where if you're playing the neutral game really well, um, it doesn't matter how hard it is to kill your opponent. As long as you're like playing like Dr. PP and you're not getting hit at all, which Falco can do with very precise like lasers, um, like anticipations and like defensive game. So Falco's defensive game in the neutral is so good that he still can win these matchups, but the fact that the fact that you have to play so well in these tournaments 
and there's like a lot on the line and you're getting stressed out and like the last stock happens and stuff like that. So basically, um, I think it's he still can do it. I think Fox just has an easier time dealing with all the uh, shenanigans floaties have with like living forever and not being able to edge guard them. Uh, well, in the spirit of closing the gap between Falco and Fox Triple Boost, uh, second part of the question is, what have you been doing to push Falco to near Fox levels of perfection, considering you're one of, if not the best Falco right now? And have you thought about making the switch to Fox or pulling him out when you think you might need him? All right, so um, that's a good question. Um, I've definitely been working on my Fox a little bit, and um, I think... After a couple more months and maybe a new controller, uh, I might start using them a little bit more. But as of right now, um, I kind of just, uh, like, I already know how to play Falco and I know how to play every pretty much every matchup. So right now I'm trying to play just play more consistent, just a little bit faster, a little bit uh, more precise. So right now I'm just trying to, like optimize my precision game basically like my execution and uh being able to like execute what i want with falco and um i know i'm like known for being really good at precision but i still feel like i could be better that makes a lot of sense and uh i I have to ask this of virtually everybody that comes on the show because it's such a pervasive part of melee uh with fox being the best character and people talking about how do you catch up to fox you know are you gonna switch to fox is is the whole joke about 20xx is that a real possibility do you ever think that this game will reach a point where everybody's playing i don't think it'll reach that point because the funny thing is i think falco actually has a good chance against Fox when he's playing really well. So I think it'll become like a a dual 20XX where Falco and Fox like take over. But then again, once you start having Falco, you start playing floaty like characters like Peach who counter <laughs> Falco really hard. Like people who tell me that Falco wins versus Peach are like insane to me because <laughs> you've never played Armada and gotten power shield down smashed into zero to death like you try to hit him and you die and then if you try to play defensive he has the priorities to like enter your defensive game and then hit you kill you off one hit and then once you get all your openings you hit him twice and then it resets back to neutral and then you have to beat him in the neutral 10 times and he has to beat you in the neutral once and then he'll take the stock with one or two neutral wins and then you can you still are trying to take his first stock with 10 neutral wins <laughs> so it's ridiculous to me that people would ever think uh, peach beats falco with the punishes peach has like you can't there's n- almost no way it's like when you see me playing falcon players that you're just like, oh, Falcon can never win this matchup because Falco hits you once and then they die. It's it's pretty much true. Like, if you can't DI out of these combos and you're dying off of one opening, then it's basically like doesn't. It almost doesn't matter how much how good you are because you're dying so quickly, <laughs> and uh, it's just. I think it'll the game will never get to a point where just one character beats one character because every character in the game gets countered. Fox, Fox gets countered by Falco. Uh, Marth gets countered by Falcon. Sheik counters uh, Falcon. And then like every character counters each other. So basically, I don't think the game will ever get to a point where it's just one character dominating. And where do you feel like the stage metagame plays into this? Because over the years, we've seen a bunch of stages get banned. We're now down to six. Um, can you can you also kind of go through Falco's stage advantages and what your feelings okay, are so going Okay, so actually, match? I think there's a, 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 f- a fundamental flaw with the stages right now, and that is FD. <laughs> FD is such a hard counter in so many matchups that I honestly feel like it should be banned now. It's there's some matchups I feel like they're almost unwinnable, and I've known about these for ever since like 2006 or 7 when I first started to play the game I would just watch like a Marth just chain grab a fox I'm like there's no way 
that this should be legal. Like, you need to have some sort of, like, escape. And FD doesn't allow for any escape. But other stages with platforms, they at least give you a chance to escape these, un, like, these zero-to-death combos that you cannot get out of. So I really feel like FD should be uh, taken out as a neutral stage. And we should have probably less stages. We should just have a few stages, probably. I actually think the game should just devolve into one stage, and that's Battlefield. <laughs> <laughs> I watched that. So, uh, watch you don't think, think that would stagnate the, the metagame a little bit? I know people were upset that they've ended up banning Brinstar and Mute City because they kind of let other characters shine a little bit. Do you think that putting it down to just Battlefield would change the way the character landscape existed or how do you feel that well actually i think it would be bad because now that i think about it if it was just battlefield i could just camp armada on the top (laughs) (laughs) but um i think fd (laughs) is just like one of those stages where it's such a hard counter like let's say mute city has such um like it's like a very small like compact stage so that it it involves a lot of interaction doesn't allow for a lot of defensive games so basically characters that are very defensive don't have are like very like inhibited by stages like mute city so characters that punish really hard punish really even harder on like fd so i think fd is just a stage that kind of ruins a certain matchups and ruin certain sets between top players. So, like, if I lose twice to Mewtwo King and then um, I counterpick him to a stage I win on and then he counterpicks me to FD, it's just, like, there's no reason why I won the third game because he's going to take me to a stage there's almost no chance I could beat him at. So it allows for no comebacks, basically. And that's what disheartens me because... Some characters just get super hard counter, and I cannot, I can't stay as a Falco main and stay Falco and try to beat him on a stage. It's almost unwinnable. Like I'd have to play another character and be able to beat all of his characters with with a character that I don't know what he's going to counter pick mine with. So I just feel like stages right now are a little bit like favored for characters like Marth and characters that are really strong on FD, but it's not too bad where it ruins it, but it's still bad enough that it ruins players like me where I'm trying to make a comeback and it's just like, take me to FD, okay, chain grab me, forward smash me, I'm dead. Like, <laughs> And it to be fair, like it takes a lot of skill to pull off these combos, but it's kind of like too hard to win the matchup it's you there's no point in like oh let me try to figure out how to get it out of this because you can't you can't get out of that it's a chain grab you can't get out of it <laughs> you can't figure out a way to get out of something you can't get out of it's kind of like a wobble well in in your defense i can hear ke- keyboards across the country uh making petitions to ban fd we'll see if it works out in your favor well let's crank through a couple more of these questions so we can uh, get everybody's so i can f- butcher people's names live on the air that's what we're here to do that's how it has to happen. <laughs> next question comes from oh god damn it the uh, <laughs> j-o-t-y it's a it's thedgety is it thedgety <laughs> I don't think it's Thedgedy. Thedgedy asks, <laughs> what's your current multi-shine record with either space animal? Um, grounded shines, I'd say I've probably done at least 60 with Falco. And if you talk about slow multi-shines with Fox, I could probably do up to like 200. But if you, did, if you asked me to do really quick ones, it'd probably be maybe 20. <laughs> Only, only twenty. O- only twenty. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> but it would actually take me a while to pull off those twenty. I'd have to like try multiple times. <laughs> it's a very hard technique. That's a one frame link, man. <laughs> and you can only pull that. Can you? That's can, that's impressive. Can you give any advice to to people trying to do that? Um. Basically, the easiest way to learn how to multi shine is to 
learn the timing for a regular jump shine. So basically what you need to do is jump and before you leave the ground you press down B. And it's a very quick motion. You'll probably have less than like point two milliseconds like two milliseconds to do it. So your finger has to be moving pretty quickly. And um you have to get the basically the jump first and then you try to get the shine that's not in the air so you jump and shine until you get it grounded so you can f- have the, m- the motion for a, a jump shine and then once you get the motion for a jump shine you can get uh, multiple uh, jump shines which is a multi shine and um, that's basically how you learn you just get the timing for a jump shine and then keep doing it well uh I hope for one day to be able to do a couple in a row. <laughs> so needless to say, it's quite impressive that you can do that many. Um, Shining star in my mind, Ian. <laughs> I appreciate that, Mike. Um, moving on to our next question. This one comes to us. Uh, number eight on our list is, you tend to do unorthodox yet effective combos with Falco. Uh, what are some underutilized setups for him in your opinion? Well-placed pun asks this one. Thank you, well-placed pun, for the easiest answer, easiest to pronounce name. On the fucking broadcast so far. <laughs> um, so, I think some underutilized um, setups are um, very weak down air into up tilts on floaty characters. So basically, what happens in um, with Falco's down air on certain characters is that if you fall fast, the hard hitting hitbox. Um, gives you more stun but if you're a floaty character a weird mechanic in the game makes it so that a weak downer actually gives you more stun and it makes it i don't know how this makes any sense but if you hit a floaty character with the weakest part of the downer it gives them more stun and you can set up to uh combos easier if you uh use weak hit downers on floaty characters well, there you go. It's that simple. And just like um, that. Actually, if thing. you guys, should I mention another setup? Yeah, no. It, the, the floor is yours, Wes. You take all the time you need. All right. So another setup, which is really good um, against um, fast fallers and uh, mid-level fast fallers is weak back, uh, r- basically auto-cancel back air into up tilt. And what an auto-cancel back air is, is a short hop back air, which is a quick, like, uh, you do it while you're rising up with your short hop, and if you do this correctly, um, basically, once your short hop ends, you have no you have no lag after the back air, and it's faster than L canceling it, and it can lead into um, up tilt very, very quickly. And there's a lot of clips of me doing this against Fox players, and I do a weak back air into turnaround up tilt. And both those hits hit very quickly. Like, it goes boom, boom. And it's very, very hard to escape. So weak, uh, turn, weak uh, auto cancel back air into up tilt is also a very good setup. That sounds great. So it sounds like you're shaving some of the frames off Falco that makes him <laughs> <laughs> so much slower than Fox in less capable hands, uh, to be sure. Hands like mine, obviously. Yeah, it's a really, really tricky uh, technique. It takes... It's taken me actually years to actually like figure out how to properly use the weak hit back air, and once you start like uh, figuring it, figuring figuring it out and seeing which ways it sends you and which moves will connect after that is like really uh, it's really hard to figure out, but once you do, it's uh it's really rewarding. You get a lot a lot off of it. I don't know question that Melee is a game that's taken years to unravel and people are still figuring stuff out. So I appreciate the insight. Do you have any others you want to share? I mean, once again, people came to um, hear you talk. Also, uh, another good setup against floaties with Falco is actually up throw. People don't know this, but Falco is really good when you're under a floaty character. Almost no floaty characters can actually out-prioritize Falco's up tilt. His up air is also very good from... Uh, characters that are coming down. On top of this, um, once you come down, he can 
he doesn't even need to be under you. He can just be on the side of you and shoot lasers. So once you like land, you're uh, already barraged by lasers, and you can get a free like approach after that. So I think utilizing um, floaty characters' inability to get back down is very like crucial in a, a lot of Falco uh, matchups. So basically using up throw in floaty matchups is actually more important than just to like throw them forward or throw them backward. So I think Falco means should keep that in mind. I hope everybody's taking notes at home because that's a lot to remember <laughs> from one broadcast. And of course the bot will be up on YouTube after the show so you can check it out later. Well we're gonna crank through to a couple more questions because we want to get uh get everybody's name on the air. This one here me friends pronounce their name. Our next question right. comes to us from Angman. Angman asks, How would you contrast your style of Falco versus PPs and mangoes? What do they do better than you and what do you do better than them? Alright, so I think it's pretty obvious that the, the three big differences the three big differences the between us are um I definitely punish harder than the two PP definitely uh plays a very calculated neutral game so it's very hard to hit him in the neutral game and Mango plays a very um pressure heavy crumble like crumble you down read you and like basically break you down and like uh, make you break with all the pressure he uh, exerts on you. So, um, I've actually like sometimes like I go through like a tournament and I feel like just randomly I'll start playing like all three of them at once. Like I'll start playing like a really, really defensive neutral game, and then once I get an opening, I I crumble you down with all the like the pressure I've watched Mango do, and then. Once I get all that pressure exerted on you, I get an opening and then I combo you like I'd normally do and I just destroy you. So like there's times where I actually feel like I play like that and I feel like that's really optimized, like really optimizing Falco where like he beats you in the neutral and then pressures you really hard into making a mistake and then once I get an opening, like I combo you really hard. So like if you put all three of us together into like one Falco, like it would be <laughs> really, really good. Like It'd be way too good. Megatron Falco? (laughs) Yeah. But I feel like I play like this sometimes, and that's when I feel like I'm playing my best, actually, when when it's very hard to hit me in the neutral game. And then I crumble, like, I do really good pressure and then get an opening, and I combo you really, really hard. And there's, there's times where you've seen this, where, like, at Sandstorm, like, I'm playing really well, and, um... Every opening I'm get, I'm getting like fifty percent, and then I'm getting all the kill setups, and I'm playing very like calculated neutral game, so it's pretty hard to kill me. On top of that, on the three, I think uh, another difference between us is Mango's really good at uh, like high pressure, like stress recovering. So like if he puts like Mango's really good at like being under pressure and recovering with the best option. And um, I think I uh, I can definitely learn a lot from Mango's recovery and PP's uh, neutral game. So, yeah, I think that's what makes, that's the difference between us three. Are hey. there any other Falcos that are placing lower than the rest of you that you think you'd have to watch out for that you yourself study? Um, as of right now, actually, I can't think of a falco player that's been doing well um uh like zoo i heard he's switching to to chic um and there really hasn't been any other falco player placing well that i've noticed i actually can't even think of any um it's all right you're gonna become megatron dude yeah and be the the king falco (laughs) yeah i'm actually once it's like PP doesn't play that much Falco, and Mango only plays Falco every now and then. So, I guess I'm the only Falco main that's actually placing pretty decent at these events. Do you think that's maybe uh, you spoke a little bit about how one of your fortes is is punishment? Uh, do you think that that's one of the reasons that you struggle to beat the gods? Is because especially a guy like Armada, when he puts up the wall, there just are no openings, so you don't get that chance to punish. Is that maybe part of what causes that matchup to skew in their favor? Um. I think it depends on each of the gods. Um, 
obviously Armada has like a character advantage in my opinion. And um so I think I'm gonna have to get through that with uh actually like changing my character possibly or I might ha- have to start like camping him on a top platform more. <laughs> but um Ban FD. Against Mewtwo King, um I think Marth is a really good character against Falco. So like I can I feel like I'm way more comfortable against against his Sheik. But once he pulls out that Marth, um my punish game has to be just as hard as he, his or I think um basically uh I won't be able to like keep up with him. So, on top of that, I also think um, uh, Mewtwo King's DI is actually pretty good against Falco. Like, I'm sure he's played. I'm sure he's had like one of his friends. Hey, hey, you gotta play Falco. I need a downer me, and so I can learn how to DI play this downer. I gotta figure out this how to DI this. I'm I think everyone's got a Mewtwo King impression. <laughs> it seems like it. And so basically, he definitely knows how to DI really well. So um, it's a, that's something I've been working on as well. But I need to learn how to like execute it a little bit better if I want to be able to keep up with players like Mewtwo King. And I think against Hungry Box, I think it's just not getting rested. Like if I don't get rested, I think I can beat him. So it's easier said than as done, long right? as I yeah. <laughs> so as long as I'm able to avoid all his rest setups, like his up throw, like DI DIing that, DIing his like um his up air on a platform into like rest, like I have to make sure I don't get caught by it. And I always make sure I tech and DI. And if I always do those two things, I feel like I have a way better chance against him than probably any of the other gods because it's a lot easier. It's not a lot easier, but I think it's easier to uh, just beat him because he plays a character that's easy to kill. That so sense. as long as I yeah. get a few openings and get a couple combos uh, and I don't get arrested, I think I can definitely beat Hungrybox. But the other players, like Mango, have to be play- playing a really good punish game. Same with Mewtwo King. And then against Armada, I have to be playing a really, really good neutral game. Well, our uh, our next at question to asker Drakester two thirty four has an alternative solution. An alternate? What the fuck? An alternative <laughs> solution for you. Uh, he is asking. Uh, he or she is asking. Uh, do you think Donkey Kong is actually viable in tournament? So I mean, so we go from slow <laughs> Falco uh, to Donkey Kong. Do you think going to an even slower character is a good way to uh, beat the fastest characters in the game? Um. <laughs> <laughs> no I offense, Drakester. <laughs> Um, went DK recently and beat a uh, like I won a tournament with Falcon and DK and I jokingly said this is the new meta and said <laughs> that DK is the future so I'm probably sure this is like referencing refer- <laughs> referencing that and um, I definitely think Donkey Kong is a um, is a character that's underrated like he has a very, very strong punish game against a lot of characters. And um, if you don't take him too seriously, uh, you're just going to lose to me uh, at a local tournament. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I definitely don't think he has what it takes to like win a major. Like, There's no way there's going to be a DK player that wins a major. Um, that's almost a fact. As long as there's someone that's playing like a really technical fox or like a really good falcon there's just no way there's like there's got to be like a five-year donkey kong main out there that just like heard you say that and just close the laptop slowly <laughs> like well no i think it. they all know they all know the low tiers know they yeah. know well on the other hand donkey kong and smash 4 uh obviously pretty strong by the way uh uh, one of our, our database websites has you listed as a Ryu main in, <laughs> in Smash 4. What do you think of Smash 4 so far? Um, Smash 4 kind of reminds me of Brawl, but like with a little bit of combos. So, I mean, it's more visually pleasing to watch. And, I mean, I guess uh, I don't think it's as boring as what Brawl was because I just, like, whenever I watched that game, I was just like, I couldn't watch it for longer than five minutes and not get bored. But with <laughs> Smash 4, at least I can watch it and, like, at least be entertained and I can watch Zero clutch out a win, 
hug his girlfriend and kiss her after. Throw <laughs> <laughs> shit. But um, yeah, um, I I've been I've been to a few locals, and, and sometimes they run Smash Four along with Melee, so I'll just like enter Smash Four with Ryu, and um, I know like basic like text in Smash Four, so like. If you sleep on me, you probably you might lose because I've beaten a few <laughs> Smash Four players. Donkey Kong, your Ryu, it's uh, <laughs> you got a lot of tricks up your sleeve, huh? Yep. I use I use actually the only reason I play Smash Four because like he's just he's really fun. I don't know why. Like I used to play Smash Four and I try to play like uh was Bowser Junior and I liked his like cart thing, but. After that, I just didn't play until Ryu was leased. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> uh, we've. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I just spaced completely out because I got three hours of sleep last night. Ha <laughs> ha. Right. That happens sometimes. Anyway, <laughs> uh, moving <laughs> on to our next question. I'm so <laughs> sorry, guys. Um, Winnie T97 asks, uh, "What were your general thoughts on your Europe trip? Did the Fox Falco nerfs affect you much? How was playing with Armada a lot? And do you feel playing him a bit helped you out as a player?" All right. So my Euro- Europe trip was actually really fun. Um, I did a lot of sightseeing. T- took a lot of pictures. Um, made a lot of new friends, uh, and, um, London itself isn't the best place in my opinion. Like the dry, the drivers are very aggressive and stuff. And, um, but other than that, like I had a really good time. I went to Germany as well. I played Armada twice. Um, the first time I played him at DreamHack, I wasn't like feeling like I wasn't feeling like trying giving it my all in grand finals, so I kind of just got bodied. But um, in Germany, I definitely felt a lot better, and I definitely tried. I still got bopped, but I definitely learned a lot, and um, I think I have a better sense of what I should do the next time I play him. And uh, other than that, I just had a really good time and made a lot of friends, and it was pretty chill in Europe. How do you feel about the PAL version? Oh yeah, the, oh yeah, I forgot about that. Um, the differences uh, in PAL and NTSC, um, they definitely change Falco, and he's definitely better against the matchups he was already good in, and now he's worse in the matchups he was already worse in. So when I was playing Armada, I actually definitely felt like I was had a disadvantage with the weak downer. But it's not that big of a disadvantage, but like when I'm comboing him, it is a disadvantage because I'm so used to using light downer to combo and you can't because light downer just sucks. So sometimes I would be using the light downer and then putting myself in a disadvantageous position because mm, it it's it just sometimes does that. It just puts him right above like it right puts you right above you. And then you can't hit them, and then now they're coming at you with like <laughs> aerial momentum. So um, it definitely felt like I was definitely nerfed against Armada. But I get playing Ice, like I was like, oh my gosh, like his recovery sucks. Like my his up smash doesn't kill me so easily now, and he has trouble killing me. So I definitely feel like Falco is stronger in Pal in the matchups he's good in and he's way weaker in the matchups he's not so good in so i guess it's a double-edged sword so and obviously those are my a, opinions in a game that's like that close it's that that's on the margins where you guys you know are obviously going by frame by frame i can't imagine what a difference it makes to have the tiny little difference like that uh changed in front of you like Pete, you wouldn't think it would but it actually does and not being able to get like a 50% combo where like you normally would and instead you get a 20% combo that really really like puts you at a disadvantage when you're trying to get like every single percent you're already trying to get so um well, it's spe- not especially a, against a guy like Armada where you have to yeah. take every percent that you can get absolutely yeah yeah like when you're playing especially when you're playing a top level play and every mistake matters um 
basically, uh, it's it's a bigger deal than most people would think. But I think in the matchups that he's already good in, like Marth, Sheik, and um, Fox, like I think he just he's so much better now. Like if I were to play Mewtwo King in PAL, I think he would have a way harder time to beat me than he would in NTSC. As same with uh, with Axe because um, she can't chain grab Pikachu in, in uh, PAL, so um, Axe might would have a lot better of a chance. So the dream hack that's coming up, I think a lot of American players should really download that 20XX and start playing on PAL because it changes a lot. <laughs> Well, uh, you know, talking a little bit about, I saw some of the people in the chat were debating, is Fox still number one on PAL? Uh, you know, obviously that's a question that everybody wants to know. Is is Fox is Fox the best? Is he so unassailable? And actually another He's still question, the best, but yeah. he's weaker. So, like, I'd say um, he's the best at being the best in general, but I don't think he's the best at, like... Not like he still gets counterpicked by certain certain characters, so I think Fox still can lose to like Marth and Falco, and in Pal he loses harder to Falco, but um, I guess in against uh, Marth it's a little like it's kind of even out. Well, uh, all interesting insights, obviously, to uh, from a trip to Europe. It's incredible how different things can be between uh, just just you know a few little tweaks. Uh, well, unfortunately, we are running quickly out of time, so let's go ahead and finish it off with one more question. And obviously, uh, we like to end with a really hard hitting question to put things out. So this one actually comes from a fellow player, Professor Pro. Uh, he asks, uh, "Why are you so stupid?" <laughs> Your response. <laughs> Yes, this was one of the top voted questions in the AMA thread. Can you do Professor a Mewtwo Pro. King level impression? Seeing what you just did. Ask me why I'm so stupid. <laughs> why are you um, so stupid? That's a good question. I wonder what that makes him after losing to me. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the end and of our show. End of our show. <laughs> we're going to go with the blow up. And we're going to end this show <laughs> there. Uh, Wes, do you have any shout outs you want to give? Anything you want to say before we close up shop? Um, um, shout outs to, uh, all my fans for supporting me. And, uh, I know sometimes like I've posted about like quitting or like saying that Falco sucks, but y'all, y'all give me the support that I need to like keep trying to be the best with the character that I think is pretty hard to be the best with. So shout outs to all the fans, shout outs to all the smashes around the world that care about smash because smash is the shit <laughs> indeed it is big passionate community well west thanks so much for coming on the show uh we will be back next week as we always are with another guest another batch of questions and uh hopefully some more uh like our last one if you like the show go ahead and hit the follow button on twitch it helps us out a lot uh check us out on youtube where the vod will be posted if you missed any of it or if you want to tell your friends go ahead and share it from there Follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook. We'll be back next week with new questions and a new guest. And for all of you who watched, we'll see you next time. I think I'm going to get smashes this shit.